Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Crossroads Rebuild. Thank you for joining me for part two of the Lincoln MKZ Hybrid Rebuild. Well, as you can see behind me, we have the front end donor car. In the last episode, we got uh, the one we're rebuilding, the primary red hybrid, uh, torn down everything except for some of the mechanical stuff. We got all the broken uh, body parts off of it. And now it is time to start getting the replacement parts ready to go. Now, the reason I'm starting with front end instead of the rear end uh, is twofold. First of all, uh, that's where most of the damage is. So I want to make sure I can get all of the mechanical parts like the radiators and all the, the core support and all that front end stuff taken care of. But secondly, I need to get uh, the parts over to Jack so they can be painted. Uh, the hood, the front fender, and of course the front bumper cover all need to go to Jack. But as I mentioned before, you can kind of see it over my shoulder. We do have some damage on that front bumper that I need to fix first. Let me go ahead and show that to you real quick. All righty, so here is our front end donor car. Of course, a reminder, the back end is uh, totaled, trashed on this car. Uh, clean title though, somehow. Uh, anyway, front end is not in too bad a shape, uh, except for this right here. Uh, can't tell you how that happened, although if you look, the little lip or whatever that goes along the bottom is also broken. Uh, interestingly enough, the original bumper from uh, the one we're rebuilding, uh, even though the bumper itself is trashed, that lower lip is actually still good, so or at least better than this one, so I will just take it off and use it here. Uh, but in any case, I need to get this bumper off so that I can repair that little corner uh, and get it over to Jack for paint. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and start here. I'm not gonna put it on the quick jacks like I did for the other car. Just gonna lift one corner at a time, take the fender liner out, get this front bumper off, and uh, go ahead and probably pull this fender off too. And then I've gotta take all the bits and pieces off of this bumper so that I can uh, fix it and get it prepped for paint. So that's the game plan for this video. I'm gonna go ahead and get uh, the front end torn down, get this bumper repaired so I can get it over to Jack for paint. Enough talking, let's get to work. girls and boys front bumper cover is off just uh, in case you're working on one of these Lincoln MKZ's or the Ford Fusion or I think it's the Mercury Milan of the same era uh, steps to get a bumper off fender liner out or at least disconnected in the front I went ahead and took them out because I need them then uh, once you've got all of that undone snaps along with the, the uh, fender and the headlight both sides and then there are two push pins and four 10 millimeter bolts on top, and out she comes. Of course, don't uh, forget to undo the fog lights. That is all there is to it. Anyway, now that the front bumper cover is off, next thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and take both the headlights out for protection, since I will need them uh, in my car, and uh, have to have this one out to get that fender off anyway, which is something we're gonna do real soon. So I'm gonna go ahead, take the headlights off, and then uh, start working on that fender. All right, headlights are out. It's really just like four or five 10 millimeter bolts and one little push clip and out they come. And then you've got three wiring harnesses behind there for your bulbs. Uh, two of them are actually attached to uh, like a turn signal and a side marker light. So a tip for you, once you get them out, it's often easier to take them out with the bulbs still attached to the harness. But once you get the light out, go ahead and put those bulbs back <coughs> Go ahead and put those bulbs back into the headlight that you took out. That way, if, the, if it's out of the car for a little while, no moisture gets into your headlights. Also, another suggestion for you, you've seen probably plenty of rebuilders um, bag and label all their nuts and bolts and clips and so on and so forth. That's a great idea. Now, this is a parts car, so you may not think it's important. However, 
when you're rebuilding a wreck, it may have broken stuff or stuff missing altogether. And so labeling it here on the parts car means if I need to get one, I'll know where it goes and where it came from. So uh, go ahead and bag and label all your nuts, bolts, clips, etc., from even the parts car. Anyway, with the bumper off and the headlights out, it is time to move on to the fender. There are a few bolts along the front here, or to the side on the apron. There's one right here on the corner. There's one attached to the hood hinge, one inside the door, and one inside that you have to get to from inside the fender. I hope I can get that with the wheel still on. And then there'll be some foam that kind of uh, adheres it to the, to the side of the car as well. Uh, you kind of cut through and peel it off. So I'm gonna go ahead and try to get this fender off now. All right, and there is our fender. And I'll be honest with you, yeah, there's a few nuts and bolts and a couple of them are tricky to get to, but the worst part of taking one of these fenders off is this foam. You're gonna find this on probably most Fords. All the ones I've worked on, like uh, the Fusion and MKZs, the truck, uh, the Interceptor, all of them, they bolt them all down and then they also foam glue them to the body. I don't know what that's for. Maybe it's just noise isolation or something. I really don't know. Uh, <laughs> but it is a pain to get those things off of there. Anyway, guys, that is as far as I'm going to go for tonight. It still looks like daylight, and it is, uh, but it's going to be dark very, very soon, and I need to get cleaned up and button everything up. Unfortunately, I get a late start because, like I said, I have several jobs, and so I can't start until I get home. So anyway, got good progress done. We got the bumper off. We got the uh, fender liners out, headlights out, fender off. All of that stuff's good to go. I'm gonna leave the hood on for now. Uh, it will obviously have to come off to be painted and all that, but I'm gonna leave it on for now uh, just to keep you know everything buttoned up and safe and all that. So this video is not done, stay tuned. I'm gonna go clean up for the night and I'm gonna catch you tomorrow and we're gonna go ahead and tear down that front bumper and start repairing it so we can take it over to Jack for paint. So with that being said, I'll see you in just a moment. then boys and girls here we are i have been working on this bumper off and on for a couple days now and uh well i've made some good progress and had some setbacks so uh here is the current situation first of all i do have it all sanded down here in the front i have uh repaired or covered up where the front license plate uh bracket was so uh, that's in good shape. I will need to put a little bit of glazing putty in there, uh, but I've got a few other places where I'm gonna have to do that anyway. So uh, not too worried about that. Unfortunately, up here where the logo goes, I did 
nick it up a little bit while I was trying to get that logo out. And a lot of that is covered by the new logo when it goes in, but there will be a little showing. So again, a little glazing putty should take care of that, no problem. Now, if you look closely at this bumper, you can see a lot of places uh, where it just had a lot of stone chips. I guess somebody been following behind a dump truck a little too close. <laughs> anyway, so I'm going through trying to clean those up a little bit again glazing putty but then there have also been places like this where uh the the paint the original paint was actually like fractured split cracked uh so i'm trying to get those uh cleaned up because if we paint over that you know it's just going to uh break apart it's actually one yeah right here you can kind of see what i'm talking about uh where it's split so i need to fix that one still um so uh, that's where I'm at. Need to go through, fix that last one, put glazing putty on all those, and we're just about there. Unfortunately, down here uh, was making good progress, and uh, well, as you can see, my repair didn't hold up. Uh, you already saw uh, what I did on the back side with fiberglass mat uh, to reinforce it, and then once that was good and solid, uh, body filler, and I haven't actually finished uh shaping it because as you can see it just split uh, i can even hear it cracking so uh, what i'm going to need to do is uh, go in from behind and either remove or at least partially remove the repair i did on the back and kind of redo that make sure it's nice and strong and then i have picked up some fiberglass reinforced filler fiberglass reinforced filler so hopefully with a good fiberglass mat on the back and then I'll remove most of this body filler and put the fiberglass reinforced filler. Hopefully with all of that, um, we can get a satisfactory uh, repair to that corner. I'm trying to do this car on the cheap, do it as economically as possible. And I'm sure Jack could fix this lickety split, but uh, I am trying to get an education here and I'm trying to do it on the cheap. So I'm going to go ahead and keep pressing forward, try to get this all repaired myself. So. I pretty well showed you where we are. I hope uh, you enjoyed um, the way I did that with uh, just the commentary behind uh, the time lapse rather than me stopping every few minutes to give you an update. But um, anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and finish this thing up with glazing putty and redoing that corner repair and then we'll move on to some other things. All right, wasn't planning on doing this, but I thought I'd show you the actual extent of <laughs> The failure on this thing not real sure what i did wrong but as you can see i was able to actually pull uh, this entire piece of repair uh, away from the bumper altogether so this thing is now uh, totally loose so uh, that is what i'm going to redo and hopefully do uh, a better job of it this time and uh, i'll give you an update once uh, once i've redone it and hopefully it turns out uh, a lot better if you have any thoughts on what i did wrong by all means uh, go ahead and drop them in the comments because I want to learn. I'm trying to do better here. So I'm going to clean this up real well, probably sand it a little bit, make sure it's nice and rough uh, so that it'll uh, adhere better, hopefully, than this one did. And uh, well, I guess I'll just do it all again. Let's keep going. and it is another day and I am here working on the bumper. I'll tell you what, I'm getting an education out of this one. It's taken longer than, well, certainly than a professional like Jack would take, uh, but I'm learning some things and uh, it's only costing me materials. So uh, as you can see, let's start here. I have, uh, well, maybe you can see it. We're in the shadows here, but uh, anyway, I have put glazing putty on and uh, filled a lot of those little nicks and uh, cracks and so on, pits and chips. And um, honestly, I'm pretty pleased with how it's turned out overall. However, I did learn something here, and this is again, something that a professional would probably know, but uh, I put it on way too thick. Thankfully, glazing putty does sand pretty easily, uh, but I put it on so thick, so I spent far more time having to sand off excess putty 
uh, than I would have if I had done it uh, a little differently and put it on just a little bit lighter uh, and just tried to fill those little holes. Uh, there are a couple of places where I got a little too aggressive with the sandpaper, and so I'm gonna have to come through and put just a little more glazing putty on there uh, to finish that up, but that shouldn't take too much longer. Now over here, where we had the major crack that I had to repair for the second time, hopefully you can see here on the back side, I do need to clean up the edges still, but um, our repair is much stronger this time. I did a couple of different layers going different directions, and that seems to be holding well. And then I've got the fiberglass reinforced filler here. Um, again, I went a little too heavy on it, but it is holding up very, very well. So I've got it sanded down, and since I'm putting glazing putty on other areas anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and also put some glazing putty in here, clean this up a little bit more, because uh, we've got a few little pits here um, and a few little places that just need to be kind of cleaned up a little bit. Uh, but this is very smooth. Uh, I think we do have a little bit of a high spot here, so I'll work on that as well. Um, so, last step in getting this bumper finished up is one more round of glazing putty, much lighter than last time, and then I'll sand that down and we'll move on. Since you've seen me already doing a lot of sanding on this bumper, I'm not going to show that, but I will check in here in a little bit and show you the finished product. All right, and that will just about do it. As you can see, we have the bumper all ready to go. Everything has been fully resanded. The glazing putty looks good. Learn from my mistakes the first time and put it on a lot thinner this time. And then over here, where the major repair was done, a little bit of glazing putty and then some primer, and then sanded that down, and it is looking very, very good. Now, this is not necessarily up to the quality of someone like Jack. Uh, but I think for my first time doing this level of work, I'm pretty pleased with it. And again, this car is being done on the cheap. So once we've got a nice coat of paint on here, I think it is going to look really quite good. So with that being said, the fender and the bumper are now done. I'm going to go ahead and pull the white donor car over here and uh, pull it up here where the truck's sitting. And I'm going to go ahead and start sanding on the hood. It's going to be easier to sand that hood while it's still on the car. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And then we'll remove it, uh, get the hood hinges off, and then all of those parts will be ready to go over to Jack. So let's keep going. All right, change of plans. Battery on the donor car is dead. I actually already swapped over. If you remember, the donor car had a good battery. I already put that in the red car. Bad battery in there. And uh, my jumper box is dead. Have another one on the way, but I just went ahead and pulled the hood off. Uh, but as you can see, it is filthy dirty. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, hose it off real quick and uh, let it dry and then get right to uh, sanding. This uh, working off the stand will work just fine. So let's get going. I'll tell you guys what, this hood is in pretty good shape. We got a few little nicks, uh, rock dings and stuff here and there. Uh, but for the most part, it's in pretty good shape. And I'll tell you what, I don't know, it's probably not gonna stand out real well uh, here on camera. But man, the pearl in this is beautiful. That really is, this white really is a nice color. Uh, anyway, we're gonna go ahead and sand it and cover it up with red. <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and get to work. Just a couple little odds and ends, a, little, a few little nicks that'll need to be uh, filled in. But otherwise, I don't think it's gonna be uh, too hard of a challenge on this one. Might have to wear my sunglasses while I'm working on it though. Great day in the sunlight, that is a bright hood. Anyway, enough rambling, let's get to work. All right, and with that, the hood is done and ready to go to Jack. The bumper is ready to go to Jack. I also have the fender done and of course the hood hinges. And that is all the body parts that need paint. Other than of course we will blend onto uh, the, let's see, the driver's side front door as well. So I'll take him the car as well. But we are ready to take these things over. So I'm gonna go ahead and pack it up, take it over to him and then we'll carry on from there.
Well, now that the body parts are over at Jack's place getting prepped for paint, well, I did the prep for paint. Now that they're over at Jack's shop uh, and he is working on painting, I have the car up here uh, and I'm trying to strip away everything broken in preparation to start putting on uh, donor parts from the donor car over here. So as you can see, you got the fan and the radiator and the condenser, air conditioning condenser out. Uh, they don't normally come out the bottom. Yes, that is the top of a trash can that I was using to catch coolant. Uh, gotta use what you got, right? Anyway, uh, they don't normally come out the bottom, but that was the easiest way to get them out. And uh, well, this came out in a lot of pieces, pretty crushed. And then of course, our radiator and condenser are effectively one thing now. But um, those broken parts are out. And uh, after assessing, now that those are out of the way and assessing what we've got going on in here, I'm pleasantly surprised. I really don't see much else uh, going on as far as anything broken. We'll get to one thing here in just a minute. But as far as anything here in the front, um, we're in pretty good shape. Now, you can see that uh, this additional auxiliary cooler here uh, has a good bend to it. And I didn't want to unhook that one until I'm ready to hook up the other one because I think it's got some sort of coolant in it as well. Um, that has something to do with cooling the electric drive motor. Uh, I don't know exactly how all that works, uh, but I want to be careful with that. So I'm going to wait until I take the one off the donor car and I'll hook that up. So I'm going to leave that on for the time being. But the regular radiator, the condenser, they were both broken anyway. And you can see there really wasn't a whole lot left in there. Now, as far as any additional damages uh, that I wasn't aware of or hadn't noticed that we're going to have to work on, there is the one thing. Now, I already pointed out that this is uh, a little bit bent out of the way, and that's an easy fix. I could do that. Just heat it up a little bit, and it should bend right back. However, there is the tiniest little kink right here uh, where you can see that this whole thing kind of went toward the back and slightly out. Uh, so I may just go ahead and give it to Jack and say, hey, can you give us a quick pull on that? Uh, and try to straighten it up. But uh, other than that one little thing, I can't find anything else that is uh, badly damaged or really damaged at all. So uh, the car's pretty well ready. Other than that one little thing there on the uh, apron, car is pretty well ready for uh, the replacement parts to start going on. So that is where we're gonna cut it off for this video. We've made great progress getting the donor parts ready to put on the car and they're over at Jack's getting ready for paint now or he should be painting now and we've got most of the broken stuff pulled off the car. Next video, we start putting this thing back together. Freshly painted parts, the new front end or the donor part front end, and we got that rear end uh, to sort out as well. So with that being said, thank you so much for watching. Appreciate uh, your support, like, comment, subscribe, all that stuff if you want to. I appreciate that. So with all that being said, we'll see you in the next episode.